Good afternoon, I'm Donna Collins, and it's a pleasure to be with everyone today as we focus on artists. Today's segment of The Arts Tells a Story, Let It Tell Yours, is sponsored by Reese Brothers Productions and focuses on a conversation with Dante Wood Spikes. Dante is a professional speaker, community worker, and video documentarian. He's known to most of us through his TEDx experiences, his release of documentary film work, and as a workshop presenter, and mostly as a friend and mentor to lots of folks. He's wise beyond his years and engaged as fully in the community as any person I know. Dante's bio says that his overall goal is to educate and connect the world beyond perceptions and stereotypes with authentic experiences through storytelling. Dante, I'm so glad you could join me today. What's up, y'all? Can y'all see me? Everybody see this? This is You Deserve Love. And I, I pick You Deserve Love as my intro because, you know, a lot of times we provide love to everyone around us, but we forget about ourselves in the process. So always remember that you deserve the love that you give to everyone around you. Hey. Well, that's why we're talking to you today, Dante. This <laughs> right. this is what it this is what it's all about. Right. Um, thank you for being here. So, I have some questions I prepared. So let's try to work through those, and I'm sure I'll have a couple of more. Okay. Tell us a bit about what's occupying your time these days, as we find ourselves fully encompassed by the COVID nineteen academic a pandemic. Okay. Well, the very first thing that took up my time was I took every opportunity under the sun to eat some food because <laughs> I didn't have to, you know, I didn't have to go to work. I didn't have to go to these places. I didn't have to go anywhere. I could just go straight to the refrigerator. So the refrigerator became my full-time job and I was just eating and eating. But um, something that's actually occupying my time is I'm trying to remain creative. Uh, because when you have a lot of time and you don't have a routine anymore and it's kind of broken down and taken apart, you don't know what to do. But as a videographer, there's so many different things that I can do, especially when it comes to virtual, uh, the vir virtuality, how we can always stay communicated with each other. Um, I'm actually working on a documentary right now about COVID-19 and the experiences that everyone is having in Columbus in particular. So I've been documenting the very beginning all the way up to this point from the protests that are happening right now to the major flood that happened not too far from here when um, right after the stay at home order was and people's cars were under the water. Um, I, I'm documenting other artists too and the things that they're doing. You know, as a storyteller and a documentarian, it's important to collab with other artists and tell their stories. So I'm actually staying busy by collaborating and documenting this whole process and seeing it from beginning the end and placing video together. So we want to look out for that. Well, I'm sure you're very busy. <laughs> and so build a little bit on that. So as a videographer, a filmmaker, I think I call you both. I can only imagine what inspires you. So as you think about these creative endeavors that you're engaged in, tell us about the process that you go through in creating that original work. So what's real interesting is I never wanted to be a filmmaker. I, I, I didn't know how to use a camera. I didn't know how to work a camera, but I first started doing things in the community and how my camera work and my videography, how that started was um, there was a young man that I mentored that actually was killed. He, he, he was murdered. But what had happened was I knew that a lot of people would stereotype him and, and place him in a category as a thug, a nobody, whatever you want to say. But we will always have conversations with each other. And I would ask him, like, why are you doing the things you're doing? Why are you in a neighborhood that you're in? And he would say, well, I pretty much gave up on life because I have been to jail. I know how people look at me. And there's really no, no jobs that I can get. And after he was killed, I was a little bit upset because as I spent time with these young boys in this neighborhood where everybody say, you know, it's poverty stricken and fathers aren't there. They don't have relationships. All you see is violence all the time. We created a peaceful environment, but nobody seen it. Nobody heard anything that we talked about. Nobody looked, looked these young boys in the face and heard 
their testimonies and stories. So as I got ups more upset with it, I decided to pick a camera up so I could start documenting the stories of all the other boys that I was mentoring and talking to. And that really kickstarted the process of, of understanding, okay, Dante, when you pick up a camera, it's very important to make sure that you document somebody's story correctly because your, your exposure of their situation and story can turn it into uh, exploitation. You can exploit people and, and just throw things out there for you to get recognized. But a moment where I'm trying to share an experience, I could, I, you could destroy somebody's life if you're not careful because people are going to remember every single thing that you put out there that's connected to this person. Um, and I, I also try to make sure that when I do share that it is vulnerable and it, it gives people an opportunity to relate because it's kind of taboo for the artist or the, the, the director, whoever, whatever you want to call it, to put their self in the forefront of the projects that they're doing. But it's for me and it's for people to get a chance to connect and to relate. So a lot of films, I actually include myself in things that have happened to me. So I just want for myself to always remain humble and understand that the same way I would respect myself and try and uh, project myself in a good light to everyone else, I have to also do that for my subject. So I use myself as a constant reminder to protect people's images and also give them an opportunity to shine their light and be recognized for good things. Well, I'm not sure that I'm going to get through this time with you without crying. So forgive me, but uh, it's so beautiful to hear you talk about how you think about people um, first as human beings with feelings and the repercussions of how uh, your art making uh, could impact them both negatively and positively. Um, thank you for that. I'd love for you to tell us, if if you would, about your independent film, Dante and De Mariah, if you would. Um, I think that's a really important story to tell. It's a very, very important story to tell. So the same exact time I met the boys, uh, the, the young man I was talking about, and I started picking up the camera, I also started working with young children. So I met De Mariah, a young Black girl in the community, and she was four years old. And I don't know what happened, but, you know, but I saw her at the church. I saw her there. As soon as I got my job at the community center, not too far down the street, I would see her there. Um, I was assigned to certain kids through the community center at the school. So I would go to the school for those kids. But when I was there for them, I would see her there too. So I was just like, you know, what the universe is speaking to me. And I keep on seeing this little girl at every single place that I go. So there's, there's something there there is something there. So I started being intentional and, and taking time to just go up to the school and just have lunch with her or to just ask her a question. So before I, <laughs> just, we get into that later, but a lot of people know me as a question person, but I would ask her questions about how she's feeling, what she's thinking, and she would share. And our relationship began to grow. And um, as time went on, I was just thinking to myself, wow, she's getting older now. And as a, as a male period, when it comes to young girls, I don't have any training or experience when it comes to being a, a positive male role model or a figure for them because I don't have any young sisters. I, I never had any um, young cousins that I would take care of. And on top of that, too, you know, sometimes, you know, not, the way our relationship happened, it makes sense. But a lot of people aren't too fond of a, a grown man being around a young girl, but I know her family. I know her teachers, everyone knows who I am. But I got a little bit scared. So the documentary is it's like me calling out for help to other people that may be in this position or never been in this position and showing our story and how it started from the beginning and the things that I'm in fear of right now as she's getting older because a true mentor is somebody that can recognize your environment and give you what's most beneficial within that moment. Not somebody that'll just say, I'm gonna give this to you. Oh, I'm gonna spend time with you. This is what you need to worry about. This, this is how you should act. It's more so about you understanding them and seeing how you can help them and, and, and teach them lessons that they actually need that benefits their lives. Um, and this could 
shape and mold her whole experience and perception of me. A lot where I live, a lot of young girls don't have opportunities to grow up with me and around that talk to them on a consistent basis that are around them that are teaching them things. I recognize that I'm in a position where I could I could make or break her perception of me. And my biggest concern is as she's getting older, I want to make sure that I'm prepared for the things that she's going to go through. And I need help <laughs> with that. So the documentary broadcasts our experience with each other, how we got where we are. And as he's transitioning into adulthood and becoming a teenager and the experiences that a young black girl can go through, I want to make sure that I'm fully prepared for that. Um, real quick, and you know, this my pat my birthday just passed not too long ago. And there's a painting of me and her in a museum. This is the painting right here. Can everybody see it's a little bit of a glare, but um, I have put a picture up and I share how upset I was because I want to be very intentional about providing moments where she sees how valuable she is. Because you know how you can everybody has a story where they can go back to their childhood and they remember that moment that hurt them, that moment where their self esteem was attacked, that moment where they felt like they didn't have a voice. So my whole thing is to be intentional with implicating those moments where I give her a voice and she can say, well, I remember that. I do remember when somebody said something that hurt my feelings. I remember when Dante took me to the museum and I saw a painting of me on the wall in a place where I didn't think I would ever go. I want those moments to be normal with her. And, you know, that's one of the, the things that the pandemic stopped was my intentionality with her and taking the places and doing things with her. But this, the, the film that I did is, that's what it's about. We're still in the works of finishing a complete version. So be on the lookout for that. Well, again, it's inspiring and, and you're wise. You're just so wise beyond your years. <laughs> um, I do want folks to know they can visit your website at Dante Woods spikes dot com all the words the way you would spell it d-o-n-t-e-w-o-o-d-s dash s-p-i-k-e-s dot com and you have some great information about the projects and the work that's near and dear to your heart things like a talk with our sons and Dante's eyes for example um, would you like to share a little bit about those projects with us yeah so a talk with our sons that, that was like the very, very first project that I did. And referring back to how I started off seeing the young man kickstarted my whole vision with having a camera and documenting things. Um, it, was a, it was a call for people to recognize in the environments where you hear a news story, you say, oh, well, five kids were shot. Five guys, somebody got murdered. And that'd be the whole story. And it's like, you know, there's so much more to this story. You know, these are more than just news stories. These are actual people. And I work with, in an environment that I'm in, I work with the children of the people that are news stories. So when you hear something on the news that says, well, somebody was, was, was hurt or somebody got in an accident, whatever it may be, the kids come to the school the very next day and they'll tell you, oh, that was my mom. That was my cousin. That was my dad. And now you, 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 you go to the, to the news page or whatever, you hear people just saying all these negative things about this person. But I'm sitting face to face with this young kid that's scared or don't know what's going on. And I'm trying to figure out like, man, how can I cater to this child? Or how can I show people that there's another side of the story that you really have to pay attention to? So a talk with our sons was more so shedding light on the experiences of young men and teenagers in poverty-stricken neighborhoods and giving them a personality and not just them being a story that you see. And it was interviewing different men and different young boys. And that's actually what helped uh, land me the opportunity to speak at TEDx, where I shared my experiences with people that I recognized saw me as an individual and not just what everybody else would say you are, just because of how you dress or how you talk or the neighborhood that you come from. And I thought to myself, you know what, since my, my college professor, my high school teacher and the pastor in the neighborhood have done these things for me, I wanna make sure that I can do this for, for the young men in my community that are just like I am. And you know, through the eyes of Dante just encompasses every single thing that I do. 
Um, I guess you can say it's more like my personal diary. Like, okay, this is the videos that I'm doing right now. Um, this is my perspective on current issues. And I definitely need to pay much more attention to that. Cause, but now that we have in this interview, I know that I have to. But, <laughs> but that's just, that's giving people a, um, a deeper dive into my mind and seeing where I'm coming from and the things that I'm thinking about. Thank you, Dante. I, I think I might have shared with you over Facebook that I was at your high school uh, before we were all staying at home and um, Mr. Music was showing me around the building and <laughs> he opened the door and there you were. And I said, <laughs> I said, oh my gosh, that's Dante. And that work is by Duart Brown. And yeah. Mr. Music said, how do you know these guys? I said, <laughs> I know the best people in town. Yeah. <laughs> but the artwork was beautiful. So it's so nice that uh, it was so nice for me to make that connection to you from the place where you did some of your learning. So that was fun. Um, hey, Dante, we're going to take a quick trivia break. It's part of this gig they make us do. Just kidding, Michael and Jim. Um, but we're going to have a little fun with it. So. Thursday's question was, Beyonce and Aretha Franklin came in at number two and number three, respectively, in what Grammys award category? And as a bonus question, who is number one in the category? Da, 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 da. Well, the category is female artist. And the answer to the bonus question, which surprised me, is Alison Krauss. She won 27 of those awards. So the winner is Todd Rector. And Todd, you win a gift certificate to Jenny's. So as soon as everything's open, we'll all go with you to Jenny's. Special thanks to Reese Brothers Productions for pumping dollars into the local economy. Um, it's so nice that uh, they are buying local gift certificates for the winners. So restaurants and establishments are getting a little, a few dollars. I think the artists are making a few bucks. Um, funny how the hosts are just doing it for free. I'm kidding. Of course we do it for free. Okay, audience members, here's today's question. And I know you'll want to play along because the prize is a gift certificate to piece of cake. Are you ready? Audience members, name two of the three movies that hold the, re the record of winning the most Academy Awards. Two of the three movies that hold the record for winning the most Academy Awards. Michael and Jim at Reese Brothers Productions are monitoring Facebook and will let us know who wins the prize. So you'll have to tune in Thursday at 3.30 to see if you won. Okay, Dante, we've all had lots of reflection time of late as we stay at home or at a distance. Right. And I think about you as the king of reflection. <laughs> <laughs> so to my to our audience, anyone who follows Dante on Facebook knows that he posts a question or a reflection statement every day. And those posts bring in literally hundreds of responses. Um, Dante, you have this knack for opening up our souls and making us dig deep. Um, will you share with us what inspired you to post those daily questions and reflections? And tell us about the responses and, and how they impact you. Um, so one of the main things that kick started that is in the process of me becoming much more creative, I said to myself, you know, Dante, you can't, you are not allowed to post a video until you create a video. You can't post a picture of somebody else until you, you, you post a picture of yourself or something that you're doing. Not in the uh, conceited way, but in a way, if you're going to be involved in what other people are doing and looking at their lives, make sure that you're sharing a part of yourself, too. So I was like, you know what? I, a lot of times when it comes to conversations and, and things that we talk about, it's based off of something that happened. It may be something that happened on TV or it may be something that happened in the neighborhood or it, like the news. It may be a news story. And that's when we would get hundreds and hundreds of comments. And I was just thinking to myself, why do we have to be impacted? by something that wasn't created by us immediately. Why can't it just be a daily conversation or a connection that we have with each other? And let's dig deeper into each other's mind. 
pers- perspective is very important, but I feel like sometimes we, we place so much emphasis of our perspective and our thoughts and what we agree with and what we don't agree with, with things that don't come back to us. We don't, it's not reciprocated. The news story can't talk back to us. The TV show can't talk back to us, but we can talk to each other about a simple question about our childhood, about you know the, 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 the last time we felt depressed. How did you find your way out of depression? When you had children, what was the main thing you, you thought about when they were born? What was your part? Did you change your life? Um, if if you if if you were abandoned as a child or if you were in foster care, what was your experience where you, you felt hurt? What was your experience where you felt happy? Because if you worked and I ask these questions because and you see it just it just clicks in my head immediately. But you know, a lot of times people ask it like Dante, are you going through something or um do you need <laughs> help? Are you in a situation? And no, sometimes yes, but most of the time, no. It's it's about being prepared for when things do happen. Um, something that I always say to myself is, you know, you have to love people before they're bleeding, or, or before they faint and they can't get up, or when they're in a position where they're crying and you say like, "What's wrong?" You know, people are hurting before that, and a lot of times those situations, people get in those situations because whatever was already happening, they may not have had that opportunity to talk. They may have not had that person to care about them. So if we discuss deep conversations, silly conversations, childhood experiences, we'll be far more prepared for things that pop up in our day-to-day lives. But we usually just don't give it time. We don't talk about it. We don't create space in our minds for it. So I feel like I, I, I try to make sure that I promote that, like, hey, I trust your brain. And I want to hear what you think. I want to see what your perspective is. And for me, it's interesting because I have a lot of different people on my page that if if they all knew who each other were, they probably wouldn't talk to each other. (laughs) But they they would. And I'm saying I'm saying like they would just completely avoid each other, but they probably wouldn't be connected to each other the way that they are. Um, And it's very important that I, I remain stable and I don't project my own personal thoughts and feelings because I don't want anyone to feel like they they don't have a voice anymore. I don't want anyone to just agree with me. I want to hear what people are thinking. So giving people the opportunity to reflect, it's like a form of counseling. It's like my prayer. You know, it's my prayer for you. It's my counseling for you. It's your opportunity to counsel me or somebody else. People have have said things and there's been somebody that I was just going through that. I just went through that. Thank you. I needed that. So fostering those friendships and connections just through asking a simple question is is all I'm really doing. Well, it's really important because I don't often see great controversy in those posts. Right. It's really friendship and this camaraderie around the topic or the question. And it just brings out the very best in people. So I, I thank you for that. I, I love reading that. In fact, I have this idea, Dante. Mm-hmm. I think you should find a great uh, partner who is a book editor or writer, and you should pull those off Facebook and create your own book. I'll buy the first copy if you'll <laughs> sign it. I got you. I got you. It's interesting because a lot of people have said that they're like, yo, yep. this should definitely be a book. Um, I'm in the process of transitioning into different forms of asking questions. I don't want to give too much away, but I just want to say that it's on the way. And all the people that have already been there, I have not forgot them. And I got something to store for them pretty soon. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk for a minute beyond your work as a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. I've heard you say before that your overall goal in life in real time is to educate and connect the world beyond perceptions and stereotypes, like with real authentic experiences through storytelling. You're a great storyteller. Tell us as members of the community how we can support that way of thinking. How do we get on the same lane as you're on to help others have those deep storytelling experiences? Well, first, I'm, just to reflect on the, the very last question, how I ask questions and a lot of people pour into me. First and foremost, we have to be open to listen to other people and where they come from and their experiences. 
So the, the very first thing you have to do is tap into your empathy and understand what other people are going through, where they come from, why they do the things they do, why they may not do the things that they don't want to do. You have to, that, that's the very first thing. And the second thing I would say is make sure you're caring for your immediate environment and, and responding to your environment the best way you know how. I feel like that's what separates the, the, the people that get recognized are the ones that are responding to what's going on within the moment, not what somebody else has said or what somebody else has done. It's like, what's my unique contribution to the environment? And the most unique thing you can do is some of the simplest things. And that's, that's love the people around you. It might be your husband, your wife, your children, your community. So just imagine if people that lived in different houses are all taking care of their family, loving their family, uh, teaching them right from wrong, contributing. And a person in another house is doing the same thing. We're automatically contributing to that way of thinking and loving each other. Because a lot of people that are doing harmful things and, and you know, like I said, beyond stereotypes and perceptions, some people are stuck to where they don't know how to see people for who they are um, for, or see the good inside of people and recognize that something may have happened as a child or something may have scared them. And this is their, their guard. Their guard is up. So you have to make sure that you're caring for yourself. And when we all care for ourselves, we all care for each other. We don't have to always respond to things that are not immediate. I, when people say, Dante, you know, you're, you're doing great things. I'm like, I'm only doing great things because I'm learning from you. I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm seeing your life. I'm seeing your experiences. I learned from you. No one is stopping you from doing what it is you want to do and how much you want to care. I think it just comes with that sense of vulnerability and being, being comfortable with yourself and saying, I want to do this. So if you care for yourself, you love yourself, like I said in the beginning, you deserve love. You deserve the same love that you give to everybody else. So if you give yourself that love, you won't feel depleted and you won't feel empty. And you'll also be able to care for the people that you care about. And they'll be able to do the same exact thing. And it's just going to amplify all over the place. I love it. I love it. Hey, we have time for one more question. And it would mean a lot to us, uh, your arts peers, our audience today, if you would um, talk to us about your hopes and dreams for when we come out on the other side of this COVID-19 crisis. You know, I'm I'm really hoping that people because, you know, some people have have said, like, you know, if you if you're a part of the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic and you just sitting sitting down, you're not learning anything, you're not growing as a person. That, to me, that's kind of insensitive. But I will say that I agree to a to an extent. What I do hope is people can take this time to be creative, something that they may have been putting off. They can actually do or they can start. Or, you know, that moment to self-reflect instead of, 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 you know, tearing yourself down and thinking about all the things that hurt. Hopefully people, are, they have time to really invest in themselves and say, like, dang, I, you know, I am a good person. I, I have done good things. This is how, who I want to connect with. Let me check on them. Let me talk to them. And I hope that everybody can, can grow and, and see how important they are as individuals and how we all contribute to each other and impact each other's moods and our thoughts and our feelings. It's, it's dangerous when, when if you're not doing good, you'd be surprised at how many other people can feel that energy and pick up on it. So to the to the artists that feel like, you know, I'm not getting paid right now for my art, remember that your art exists without the money. So, you know, what you can do is create right now. And once you come out of COVID-19, you want to have a whole catalog and body of work that you can share that is going to be off the hook or, you know, just normal everyday person to, to, the, to the people that lost their jobs. Um, to the kids that are at home, it's like it's time to, to, to tap into your creativity and whatever it is you want to do, whatever it is you want to say, this is the, the chance to do that. And, you know, when you do that, plan long term, because this gives us insight to what could happen. If, if it does happen again, it's something that we can be a little bit more prepared for because nobody predicted it. So, you know, I'm, I'm in it with everybody else and I hope that everybody's doing well and they take this time to grow. Thank you, Dante. If folks are not following you on Facebook, I bet you're going to have lots of friend requests after this uh, time on Facebook Live. 
Thank you for joining us today. And I want to thank uh, the Reese Brother Productions for inviting me to do some interviews and one with Dante today. Special thanks to Nikki at Nicolette Cinema, Cinema Graphics for helping and making the magic with today's technology. Folks, she is amazing. And we also want to congratulate today's trivia winner. And I'm looking forward to hearing who wins next time. And most certainly, I want to thank you, Dante, for joining me today. So until next time, I'm Donna Collins, and I'll be joining you as a listener next week as a new host joins for Tuesday's edition, Art Tells a Story, Let Us Tell Yours. You won't want to miss it. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.